Hello and welcome back to the channel, How You Move the Decimal. In today's video, I am continuing to photograph greeting cards. All of these greeting cards have been listed on eBay for several weeks. I think this is my last video of photographing greeting cards. And I think I have a couple of more of listing them. But all in all, I think it took me about six hours split up between a couple days to photograph them all. I did them mainly while my children were at school. And I had full use of the dining room table where I don't have full use of the dining room table anymore. Unfortunately, it is becoming tis the season and with activities and stuff like that, I just don't have the ability to use the dining room table. So I'm hoping in the future I'll be able to, but then I'll have to move a bunch of decorations around when I do it. I do like these foldable postcards. They're very 1970s, very trippy. I think they're really pretty. Um, unfortunately with these and with the um, strawberry ones, because of the bright color and age that they were actually fading through. And I noticed that a lot with some of the vintage postcards. So what I wanted to talk about today was kind of funny. Um, I've mentioned Reddit before. I am on Reddit. I love Reddit. Reddit is such a time suck. But I subscribe to several different forums. One of them is the flipping forum and one of them is the cleaning forum. And the cleaning forum, actually, I had to double check it because I thought it was the flipping forum. Oh, and these are the strawberries that bled through. So, um Anyway, I was on the cleaning forum and people will post pictures and like ask advice on how to clean things. And this person posted that they had, they'd washed their boyfriend's sweatshirt and it was ruined. It had blue all over it. It could be, you know, a couple things. One, it could be the laundry detergent didn't get out of it. So it could be salvageable if it's just detergent stains. Two, if they washed it with colors. Then um, a lot of people are saying that they washed it with jeans because it looks like a jeans stain. It was a white hoodie. And unfortunately, it was a white hoodie, but it had like um, lettering on the sleeve. So we couldn't just bleach it out and try to salvage it that way. Uh, the bleach won't bleach the lettering out, but sometimes it can make the lettering crack and get brittle. So I'd be hesitant to use bleach on any clothes that have any type of like vinyl lettering on them. Of course, if it's like stitched lettering, it will bleach it, but vinyl lettering tends to be safe. However, it can cause it to become brittle and crack. So this person showed the picture of their boyfriend's sweatshirt and I was reading through the comments and one, why is nobody teaching people to separate their colors at least their jeans? Like if you have dark wash jeans, don't wash them with white sweatshirts. I do colors and darks when I do laundry, but I also have color catchers in every load. So just in case something bleeds and if something is new, I tend to wash it with stuff that it's okay if it bleeds with, even with color catchers, especially black items. So if I buy something new that's black, like leggings or something that may be prone to bleeding, they're going to be washed with other black items just in case they bleed. But I will say the color catchers work like a charm. I don't use the shot ones. I use like the off-brand ones. They're cheaper and you get more of them and it's the same exact thing. And most of the time I will rip them in half and only use half of a sheet because I do separate my laundry and I don't get a lot of bleeding. If I do, it's something that's relatively new. Um, also be careful with temperatures you wash on. I wash almost everything on cold except for towels and bed sheets. They get washed on hot. Um, sometimes they get washed on sanitary if um, like my five-year-old wakes up and vomits all over her bed, then it'll be, that will wash that on the sanitary cycle, which is stupid hot. It's even hot when I open it up to pull them out to put them in the dryer. I will open it up and you like it's hot to touch and my laundry room is in my um non-climate controlled garage so sometimes sometimes it's like super cold in there and I've opened up the sanitary cycle and steam has actually come out of my off the clothes when I pull it out because it's still so warm after the sanitary cycle I know it kills life expectancy of clothes and sheets and stuff when you wash them that hot but when you have kids vomiting on them or um 
towels I tend to wash just on hot, except if they've been in the laundry room for too long and they get like a musty smell, then I will wash them on sanitary too. But um, I'm not washing jeans on sanitary. I'm not washing things that it will destroy. Anyway, enough of a laundry lesson. What I was talking about was with this forum, the amount of people that said, replace it, go to eBay. There's a tag on the inside. It gives you the RN number. It gives you like, just go to eBay and replace it. And everybody was chiming in like, oh, I've done this. Oh, I, you know, my kid had this favorite hoodie and I ruined it. And so I went on eBay and replaced it and they never knew. I just told them it must be in the laundry. It must be in the laundry every time they asked. And I'm like, you know what? That's an untapped market. When we think about like only selling expensive clothing, only selling clothing that gets a high turnaround, maybe we're also doing a service by selling the bread and butter stuff because they're able to go and get replacements. And maybe that's why stuff sells. Or if you have, you know, somebody that's on the spectrum that may be incredibly attached to a certain feel of clothes or a certain style of clothes that's no longer made and you can find them at thrift stores. Uh, we see this a lot with um, binkies and stuff with stuffed animals that children are incredibly attached to and they accidentally left at the airport or something. Uh, we had this issue with my son. He was incredibly attached to Winnie the Pooh and it was a specific Winnie the Pooh. It was from Cole's Cares. It was a $5 Winnie the Pooh. It, honestly, it was an impulse buy when I got it. He was only like two months old when I got it. And I'm like, oh, you know, look, it's as big as he is. Ha ha ha. Next thing I know, he's attached to it. Like, it went everywhere with him. It Cole's Cares $5 stuffed animals are not meant to withstand toddlers. And I remember going on Facebook and going, please, do any of my friends have this? Because it was very popular. You know, it was a Kohl's Cares. It was $5. Anybody get it for like Christmas or whatever? I'm like, I will buy it off of you. I will give you $5 for this. You know, I just need this pair. Um, luckily, my friends came through and I had several of them say, here you go. You know, here's my bear. Most of them were like, do not give me any money for this. Thank God I'm getting a stuffed animal in my house. My kid is not attached to this at all. So um, we cycled through all three bears, and I've kept all three of them to tell him about it when he's, like, older. So they're like, look at all three. that You just wore the junk out of this. So, um, but I didn't think about that market, I guess where needing to replace something that got ruined or needing to replace something that just normal wear and tear and it's something that you're very attached to. Maybe it's something a dead relative had and you want it back. Um, you want something similar to it. So I've, I didn't think about that, but I thought it was funny that so many people like, oh yeah, you know, I had to replace this specific item. So I went to eBay or it took a couple months, but then someone finally posted the right item in the right size and I was able to get it. And other people were like, yeah, you know, if you do this and you're really looking for stuff, um, ask that seller if they have any more of that or tell them if they come across that, then you will you would buy it from them again to like keep you in mind. And it's just weird coming from a group that's not resellers. Like I expect this in like the flipping group on Reddit, but coming from the cleaning group where these are mainly the consumers, not the sellers. I was very interested in the responses to that and very interested in how they were eagerly talking about it. And nobody said like, Oh my God, eBay sucks. I got screwed over. The seller didn't do this. The seller did. No, almost all of the, people in the group were very positive about eBay sellers. Like, you know, uh, one of the ladies was like, my son is autistic. He only wears a specific pair of pants that Kmart sold. And Kmart was huge in the Midwest. We had like three Kmarts in our town. We have zero Kmarts in our town now. And so she's like, they only sold him at Kmart. He, and I'm assuming she's probably in her sixties and her son is probably my age. And she's like, I just go to eBay and there's this one seller who had several of these pans and I asked them if they had any more or if they come across them. And she's like, several years later, they contacted me and said they have happened to come across a bunch more pairs of them and they were in his size. And I was like, 
we don't hear about that as much. We don't hear about the sellers that go above and beyond for their customers. And I know we don't have to. This is a business. We don't have to go above and beyond. But especially for us part-time sellers, we can, get, we can become more attached to our buyers and more willing to help our buyers, which is crazy. Um, but it was nice seeing it from a buyer's perspective in a non-selling forum. It was nice seeing nice things about it. Not like I got screwed over. It was cheap crap from China. Um, a lot of them are like, you know, if you buy multiples, sometimes they'll cut a deal on shipping and everything. And they were talking about eBay. They were not talking about Poshmark, which is very interesting because when we think of clothing now, we almost don't think of eBay. We almost think of Poshmark, but every single post was about eBay. And I don't know if it's because it's the search is easier. It's been around longer. Why? But almost every single post was about eBay. A couple were like what I did where I went on Facebook and was like, does anybody have this? And went through that. But everybody was very pleased with eBay and talked a lot about eBay. So I thought that was very awesome. And I wanted to share it with you guys. So please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and continue to watch my videos when I put them out. And one day my voice will come back. Have a great day.